It's been a long time since Morrowind, but a lot of us look back on it very fondly. I'm Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, here's 10 Morrowind facts you probably didn't know. Number 10, in 2007, a game called Limbo of the Lost came out, which got in trouble for stealing assets from a ton of games, but very prominently stole full locations from Morrowind, as well as weapons, armor, various items, and also lifted a lot of things from Oblivion. In fact, this game is so infamous, the person who made it has gone into hiding. But I mean, when you do something so obvious, I mean, look look at the asset flip here. And in most cases, he didn't even try to like even cover it up at all. Number nine, there's a project to build the entire mainland of Morrowind for the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Originally, the game was going to take place over the entire province of Morrowind, which included a lot of different locations, from islands to peninsulas to the mainland, and the scope of it was just too big. Because of that size, it was reduced to Vardenfell, which is the island pretty much in the center of Morrowind, and is obviously iconic because that's a place that everybody has now explored, but a lot of people wanted to expand to that original scope, and a team of people formed back in 2003 and has been doing this ever since. Now, even they recognize that the entire Morrowind province is something that they would never get done, so their focus is adding the mainland in. Now, keep in mind, Morrowind is a huge game. Vardenfell is not a small island, and the mainland is easily several times the size of that island, and to make it at least as detailed as Vardenfell, with a bunch of hobbyists and amateurs, it's, I mean, it's impressive, and it's taken them a long time, but the current build that they have up is actually pretty amazing. If you have Morrowind working on your computer and know how to mod it, I would highly recommend checking out tamriel-rebuild.org, because it is, it's really cool. Number eight, the soundtracks for Morrowind and Knights of the Old Republic were written by the same composer and only a year apart. And I don't know if you remember the soundtrack to Knights of the Old Republic, but it was phenomenal. To know that he did that literally directly after working on the Morrowind soundtrack, which is, I would say, still currently probably the best of all the Elder Scrolls soundtracks. I mean, you can't beat that main theme in my brain. But the fact that he did that back to back, just nonstop, it's pretty impressive. In fact, his name is Jeremy Sewell. And if you're watching this, Jeremy, and I didn't say your last name right, I apologize. But he has done a ton of video game soundtracks, an absolute massive number of them, just back to back to back. Starting in 1995 with Secret of Evermore and just never stopping. He also composed Oblivion and Skyrim, just in case you're wondering. Number seven, the month of Morningstar for some reason is not in Morrowind. It is in all of the other Elder Scrolls games. All of the games besides Morrowind have a 12 month calendar, which starts with Morningstar and ends with Eveningstar. Pretty much all of them are time oriented, called things like Sun's Dawn, Frostfall, Mid-Year, and for whatever reason, Morningstar just isn't in Morrowind. I don't know, maybe they just don't like doing things the way everybody else does and added a few extra days to every other month, or maybe somebody who just wasn't paying attention. Number six, expansion packs for both Morrowind and Skyrim sort of give you future and past nostalgia. I say future nostalgia because if you've played both games and both expansions, well, you know exactly what I mean. Blood Moon, the Morrowind expansion, takes place on Solstheim, which is a little bit northeast of the mainland of Skyrim and is disputed territory it's also the setting for the add-on Dragonborn for Skyrim, meaning in both games you play on the island of Solstheim. There are areas of Solstheim that remind you very much of Morrowind and areas that remind you very much of Skyrim. Snowy areas, villages filled with Nords, but also areas occupied by those bizarre big mushroom things and places like Raven Rock, which literally look like they came right out of Morrowind. The reason I said future nostalgia is because the first time you would have seen it if you had played all the games chronologically with their expansions is Morrowind. And then you would have gone back to it in Skyrim. It functioned as both kind of a preview and a callback 
in both the games. Number 5, Jub. He was the other prisoner at the beginning of Morrowind and eventually went on to drive all of the cliff racers out of Vardenfell. Now this obviously caused him to be in high regard as the cliff racers were not in high regard. They were in fact kind of a nuisance. They are basically like stingrays in the air. Some people think that they're actually dead, that they're extinct, but no. It's just that they had been driven down to manageable levels. Anyway, he was killed at some point and was only mentioned in Oblivion but his soul was actually still inhabiting the soul cairn which would be accessed in Skyrim through a portal in Castle Volcahar. Number four, in the castle of Tel Vos, there are various towers. In every single one of those towers, there's a hidden room that's filled with stuff that you might want. In the services tower, behind a rug, there's a trap door. There's a pretty fair amount of gold in there. It's a pretty intense lock though, level 100. The central tower, if you go to the bottom floor, you'll find a false wall with a cruel flame blade inside. In the southern tower, there's another false wall that can be seen to the side of a door as long as you're walking down the stairs. You'll find it. There's some nice potions in there. The person who designed that castle is really sneaky. Number three, the original plan for the Dagoth Ur fight was that he would be weaker if you killed all of the Ash vampires, the nobility of the sixth house. Now, none of these people were actually vampires. In fact, they weren't actually even people. All these monsters were spawned by Dagoth Ur and have some sort of connection with the diseased corpus. But you can't catch that from the Ash of Vampires either. You can't catch vampirism. They're not undead. They really just have, like, a sort of misleading name. But guess what? If you kill all of them, it doesn't actually have an effect on it. Number two, Master Aaron, who lives in Tel Vos, has a lot of family all over Vardenfell. Behind finding their ancestral tomb and beating some undead around it, there's quite a few living relatives hanging around Vardenfell, and they truly show quite a variety in their place in society. They're not all nobility by any stretch. It's one of those things that's really fun and interesting if you get deep into the lore because it's very well thought out. And finally, number one, there are more NPCs in Morrowind than in both Oblivion and Skyrim combined. A lot more. Now that's not to say they're all as detailed and individual as a lot of the various NPCs in the ensuing games, but Morrowind does feel a little bit more lived in thanks to all the people living in it. Now being there's no voice acting, that probably has something to do with it as well. You really only have to write a few lines of text and that pretty much takes care of the talking aspect of things. And because you're playing a game where everybody's pretty much talking like that, it's all text, you get pretty used to it. And to be fair, I get that. I understand why there would be more NPCs in this game than the other two. All the voice acting would take a lot of time to do and then would take a lot of space to store. Really, Morrowind is a very interesting game that evolved video games in general. Lots of things happened because Morrowind did them. The Elder Scrolls games are phenomenal, and Morrowind was the biggest jump in all of them and is amazing in its own right. What interesting memories do you have of Morrowind, or are you still playing it? Let's talk about Morrowind in the comments, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do it. We upload brand new videos every day, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.